Welcome my friends, Seven Gray here. Thank you for joining me for this episode today. In the last episode, I showed a video about how I successfully repaired my diesel heater. Well, it wasn't shortly after that that I found out there are several complications that happened as a result of that, which I'm trying to address today and in this video. Let's roll the intro and I'll get into it. My diesel heater that I installed here in the cargo trailer conversion uh, worked actually for three times after I had done my repair. I had pulled it apart and replaced a tiny little circular tubular screen that wraps around the glow plug. After that, ran a few times and then I started getting E10 errors. And I tried several more times and then I started getting E3 errors. E10 is a catch-all, meaning that it is uh, failed to ignite after multiple attempts. An E3 error indicates that the glow plug is no longer working. So, I pulled out a spare glow plug that I had and went to install it and found out my spare was actually broken in half. It had arrived just a couple days earlier in the Amazon package, the same package that I pulled the little screen out of, but it was damaged. So... Today, I'm going to pick up an Amazon package with a whole bunch of spare screens, another glow plug, and some other miscellaneous parts. Going to try round number two, fixing the diesel heater. Well, if that wasn't enough, over here is my refrigerator. It's sort of an apartment size refrigerator. I think it's 19 cubic feet or something like that. So it's not quite house size, but it's bigger than the small dorm size. And I love this fridge. It's great. It has a top freezer and a bottom fridge. And I had it in a riser. Let me show you what my riser looks like now. The problem is back here in this corner, I have my wheel well. And I wanted my diesel heater roughly the middle of my trailer. And this is the diesel heater here. So I decided to mount the fridge a little bit higher. And I'm a tall guy. I'm almost six foot six. So this works great for me. So I made this riser out of two by fours and I put the fridge on top of it and it had a nice little box around it. I'll link the episode where I created this. But the problem was I didn't leave enough space between the riser and the cabinet here. So I have the choice of rebuilding two cabinets and building, rebuilding the wall or changing the riser setup. In addition to this, I suspect my fridge has not been getting quite enough ventilation. Uh, so I've decided to remove the box that goes around the sides of the fridge so it has more ventilation, easier to install the fridge, and when I transport it, I'll just have to put a ratchet strap around it, hold it in place once I arrive. It's not gonna go anywhere unless there's a massive earthquake. So now I'm disassembling my box, rebuilding the little pedestal, the uh, riser thing, and fixing the diesel heater all at the same time. So it's like my build was moving along very slowly, I realized this, and making steady progress. Just moving at a snail's pace, which is comfortable for me. But now I'm going three steps backwards, pulling things apart, redoing them to change it for a better, more efficient and economical solution. My Amazon packages uh, were delivered to Salida and I camped a little bit outside of Salida. So I'm making a short drive into Salida, running a couple of errands, picking up my packages. And then tomorrow when it's uh, hopefully sunny and early and sort of warm, I'm going to try to get my diesel heater repaired. My first stop is to stop here at the Welcome Center and you can get free water here. It has potable water. There's a faucet there. So this is typically where I fill up my five gallon jugs until I get my uh, big water tank installed. So anyway, on to my next errand. All right, I've arrived at my next stop. This is shipping things. This is where I had my Amazon packages shipped to. I've probably had maybe a dozen packages delivered here throughout the summer. Uh, season and I typically split my packages half of them a general delivery if they're not critical items but if it's something critical like a heater that I need timely or I'm moving camp then I use a shipping service and this is the shipping service that I'm using here just outside of Salida it's called shipping things 
this particular place is really popular for the RVers because it's right in this Salida area at the higher elevations so people come here for the summer and this is very convenient because there's not any FedEx service like a general place up here so really this is the best place to go if you're doing FedEx and it really makes it easy for UPS and uh, particularly for Amazon packages and I should mention the prices are very reasonable four dollars per Amazon package or per package that you get which is much better than some places um, I've been paying anywhere from six seven eight dollars per package so four bucks pretty good deal all right on to my next stop on my next stop Ace Hardware need to get a couple of uh, tiny little screws in here for my cabinet seem to have lost uh, these just itsy bitsy little screws that are used on my cabinet hinges run inside and my last stop for the day Walmart have a couple of grocery items to get here then back to my rig and tomorrow hopefully I'll get uh, all my repairs done and my diesel heater working crossing my fingers that I can get it working again well it's the next day and I have great weather today it rained pretty much from noon until midnight yesterday so and I didn't really feel much like working on the diesel heater, especially if I have to go outside, which I do need to do a little bit today. So, first thing up today is to test the glow plug and see if that is the item that is not working. Um, I was getting E03 error, which indicates the glow plug is not working. This is the replacement glow plug, and this one is intact and not broken. So I'm going to go ahead and install this and then do a test, see if I can get this thing working. This is the uh, old diesel heater and here I have a special tool that allows me to remove the glow plug and I just need to twist this. I already had uh, loosened it so now at this point just have to be careful to remove it, not break anything. Well I guess it may or may not be intact. I can inspect it and see if this uh, existing one is broken or not so here it's coming out and it's out it has a little slot here so that you can get the wires in so let's see if this is actually still intact it looks intact and it looks fairly clean it has a little bit of soot here I have an emery board used for fingernails which I can clean this up I can also burn this off if you have the right kind of fuel which I don't really have I don't see any other electrical brakes in the circuit in the wiring and here is the replacement so I'm going to try to install this alright new glow plug is in and I just need to tighten it up just like one last little turn with a screwdriver to get it snug don't want to over tighten it or break it but it's just so it's a firm connection and I think it feels good now pull a little gear off got to assemble this back on slide this little cap back down and then put the circuit board back down cover back on top and do a test all right I believe everything is hooked up again so I'm going to try to do a test with the glow plug if this doesn't work I'll have to try the fuel line if that doesn't work I've purchased a replacement heater that I can try because I'll probably be at my wits end for what to do on getting this fixed all right let's go ahead and try a test it's on and hopefully this works it's going through the normal startup procedure here all right it's about three minutes in the pump is working and it should ignite here any second hopefully crossing my fingers fan is ramping up come on ignite all right uh, first try was a failure so i think i still have some problems here it didn't go it's uh it will try one more time and if it doesn't ignite then the only other thing i can do is try the fuel line um the pump is working it is pumping so i'll try the fuel line see if i can get that working if not then i'll have to i guess try 
my replacement heater. I'm just sort of baffled at what exactly is happening here. Okay, attempt number two was a failure. I'm getting E10 error, so it's not the glow plug. Uh, it's something else. I don't know what's going on here. It's in the shutdown mode now. I got the E10 error here. So that's indicating a uh, multiple start failure. I guess I'll be running some fuel line and trying to see if it's the fuel line that fixes it. If not, you know, what can I do? I, I don't know. It's probably not worth my time to spend hours and hours trying to fix this when a replacement of a completely new unit is $120. So, you know, in 30 minutes, I could have the new unit installed and running. So, uh, you know, I'll just have to try this one last attempt. This is the fuel line kit that I bought from Amazon. I'll put links to all this stuff down below in case you're interested. Um, this particular one is hard nylon. This is really hard plastic. And the diameter is a little bit smaller. I think it's two millimeter instead of four millimeter. So you have to use these black type of uh, adapters, which I'll show you when I install that, to go from the larger size down to the smaller size tubing. But let me show you the flexible tubing that I installed before and what that looks like so you can see sort of the comparison of what I'm putting in versus what I have now. On the tongue of my trailer, I installed this box that I bought at Goodwill and I think I paid like $40 for this. It was really a great deal. These boxes are super expensive. So if you go into like Home Depot or Tractor, uh, whatever that is, Tractor Outlet, I forget. But anyway, or even online, these things are several hundred dollars. But this is a little bit beat up. It's got some dents and stuff. But inside I have a fuel tank from a fishing boat. And I upgraded from the small two liter or four, I think it's four liter tank that comes with the diesel heater and put this tank in. Here on the back side, you can see this hose. This is a flexible, uh, it's like a polyurethane hose that's back here. And this has been working fine for several months. Well, I feel a little bit like a fool or an idiot. I just realized that when I came to this site that I forgot to do one important thing. Uh, when you go from and change altitude and even arrive at a new site, it, uh, this particular tank has two um, air releases because just like a bag of potato chips or soda, it develops pressure as you go from uh, changing altitude. So you're supposed to undo this smaller one on top to give enough air to go in so that it allows the fuel to go easily out through the hose just like when you're pouring out a jug if you have an extra release valve uh, a secondary one to allow the air to go in while the liquid's going out then it makes things easier so what i typically do is loosen this to where it's just sitting on top and open this all the way and i forgot to do that so i think that's been what's causing my problem this entire time so let me go do a test and see if this runs with this now open well, you'll never believe it. Well, maybe you will, knowing me, if you've watched enough of my videos. Um, I'm really, really smart when it comes to book learning and studying and, you know, ancient languages and stuff like that. Not so smart when it comes to hands-on, like, handyman skills. This is a whole new skill set to me in just the last few years. And I've learned a lot with building my step van and now with this trailer, but... Sometimes I just miss things that would be obvious to somebody that's more hands-on, mechanical, or handyman. The diesel heater took a little bit of priming, and now it is running. So I'm going to run a few more tests throughout the day, turn it off, turn it on several times, and then try to run it in the night tonight. And if it runs, probably we'll still upgrade the fuel lines with that nylon hardened hose but I think I solved my problem. Here you can see it's successfully running, full bars, it's hot, I've got hot air coming out, it's looking good. I've now run about four or five tests throughout the day, every time the heater has started up fine. However, I'm slightly concerned because the startup pattern sounds different than what I'm used to. It seems like it goes through a cycle where the 
uh, blower speeds up and normally it would ignite at that point but instead during the first round it uh, sort of cuts off and then it goes down and I see the LED display over here um, blink off just for a microsecond and then it'll say the word on instead of the time and then it'll start over again like it's trying to start a second time and it starts successfully the second time so I don't know what's going on I'm gonna run it overnight again and see if it starts up in the middle of the night well it's the next day and I've done several more restarts and probably a half dozen just testing out the diesel heater to see if it's solid and if it's working and good news bad news it is working it starts up normally it will start up on its first try and it's been doing that for several months and my previous heaters did that this heater is acting up just a little bit and usually it takes the second attempt to go the automatic startup routine does two tries before giving the e10 error and most of the time it will start on the second try and there's been a couple times it actually started on the first attempt so I think I still need to do some tweaks with the fuel line and fuel filter system. I will say I talked to a couple of friends and read some comments uh, in the last video. And uh, my friend James owns a, a tool truck and he has a diesel heater. And he says that a part of his regular maintenance is to do twice a year changing the fuel filter and the glow plug and the aspiration circular tubular thing so he changes all of those a couple times a year so i'm going to start doing that just as a regular maintenance thing and the second tip came from badge badge did my first install of a diesel heater and got me started with all of this he's uh rec he recommends changing out the fuel filter and the fuel line so i'm going to be doing that as well well i was just getting ready to edit this video today to upload it and it's been a few days since the last video clip that you just saw and i've run the diesel heater probably three four days um, twice i ran it overnight and five six times it has run just fabulous absolutely no problems a total fix just as i mentioned in the last video clip but Last night, when I tried to turn it on in the middle of the night, I started getting errors again. Here you can see the E03 error once again. So what is the E03? It is the glow plug. I just replaced the glow plug just a few days ago. Brand new. That thing's supposed to last three to six months. Three months with hard use, six months with... You know low use maybe longer so that is a little troubling um, I guess it's possible that there's a break in the wires or the connection to the circuit board or something else like that but given that this is like the third time this thing has gone out uh, as a backup I purchased a redundant replacement diesel heater just in case I wasn't able to fix this so I'm going to go ahead and install a whole new diesel heater minus maybe the control panel, uh, fuel pump, and the fuel hose. I just replaced the fuel hose as well. So uh, all that will be new and uh, I'll install this new diesel heater and hopefully that will solve the problem. One other thing I should mention is I traded a few messages with Badge who helped me install my first diesel heater. He is recommending going away from the Chinese diesel heaters and using one of the um, other brands like the Canadian or German version. So um, I'm going to be shopping for one of those, probably get one off of eBay, um, a used one. Badge seems to think that those will be just perfect for my needs. So I will pick up one of those when I can get a good deal on it. And then I'll run this Chinese diesel heater that I just purchased that I'm going to install as a replacement until it dies six months, a year, two years from now. And then when that happens, I will replace it with the more expensive upper high-end diesel heater. That's all I have for this episode. It's been a roller coaster here with the diesel heater and just lots of problems. But uh, you're probably getting sick and tired of this. So 
Probably I'll do videos on other things in the future, but that's what's happening in my life right now. Thank you so much for watching, savor the moment, and I'll see you in a future video.